Right. Well, even, even if you go to the poll and not Republican or Democrat, I, I think it was maybe three months ago, independents believe the greatest threat to democracy was Joe Biden getting reelected. And that was independence, not Republican or Democrat. Ever since the Democrats lost the 2024 election, there have been a lot of left-wing pundits and moderators out there trying to say, hmm, let's do a little bit of soul-searching and try to figure out what went wrong. Of course, a lot of the conclusions they're drawing is that it was all just poor messaging. It was all just poor marketing. And that's what we're going to see more of today. Not the fact that a lot of the Democrat ideas are bad, but the simple fact they couldn't deliver them the proper way. So before we jump into these clips, please like and comment on this video so we can break through the algorithms. Here we go. We're pushing people out of this party, and the last thing I'll say is, I hate all these people, the anti-woke, the anti-this, the anti-that, but you got to look in the mirror at a certain point. We've had five movements in a row in our party that rely on dehumanizing binaries, where you're putting down some people to lift somebody else up. Uh, I love all our movements, but, but there's a moral flaw when every movement's got to put somebody down. Black Lives Matter, all white people are racist. That, that is not going to work. Oh, okay. no, no, hold on a second. Hold on a second. That, that, is, that is, in fact, a part of the ideology that, that subconsciously uh, there's unconscious bias. And the way that lands, though, for people is you're calling them names. It, we, there's got to be a better way to say it. You walk through all of our movements. Uh, you, you look at uh, Bernie. I love Bernie. All billionaires are evil. Uh, everybody 99% is a victim. Oprah Winfrey's a billionaire. She's not evil. You look at the, um, uh, uh, the, the climate movement. All, all inter traditional energy is evil, including poor, sick coal miners. Environmentalists can throw ketchup on the Mona Lisa and their heroes. That doesn't work. Uh, you know, uh, look at me, too. Look at now, if you're Jewish, if you're Jewish, you're a colonizer. If you're uh, against, uh, if you're for the Palestinians, you can do whatever you want to. These things are landing very poorly because it's not Dr. King. It's not Nelson Mandela. It's not Ella Jo Baker. It's not Fannie Lou Hamer. Progressives are at our best when we're saying we want dignity for everybody. The, we, we want to free the jailed and the jailers. We want to free the people who have been oppressors and the people who have been oppressed. We want to free everybody. When you stand for everyone's dignity, everybody's humanity, the whole world stands with you. When you do these dehumanizing binaries, even though we're well-intentioned, it lands poorly. So there's a lot of stuff for us to look at. I think we can take these same movements, love everybody, bring everybody to the table, tell white guys we need them, tell white guys we're mad at them because we need them. We're mad at them because we love them. We want them on our side. There's a different way to talk about this stuff. So there you basically have it, right? Van Jones coming out and saying that, hey, our movements have a problem, right? You don't want to dehumanize people. You don't want to make people feel bad because automatically that makes them dig their heels in and say, we're not going to go along with anything you say. However, all of those movements are saying horrible, awful things about people's innate characteristics, things we cannot change, what we are born with, okay? And if you don't go along with them, then you are the problem. So Van Jones has no problem with what they stand for. He just has a problem with the message. You can't come out and say it out loud. We all know what you mean, but you have to deliver it better so that way we can fool people into voting for us, which of course, as I always say, that's what the leftists, the Democrats always do, right? Republicans, we come out and say, hey, here's what we stand for. Please vote for us. But the Democrats, they have to hide what they really believe in order to trick the public into saying, oh, that sounds like a pretty good idea. And then of course you get wide open borders and things like that, okay? So Van Jones, of course, is correct that the marketing sucks, but also the message behind it and what they believe is just as equally bad. So stop trying to hide it. I hope the party takes a chance to look at the fact that we pushed all our rebels out of this party. Uh, we had a rebellion in our party in 2016. It was called Bernie Sanders. You had a rebellion in your party in 2016. It was called Donald Trump. Your rebel won. Our rebel lost. Uh, and then since then, the rebels in our party have been pushed out. Uh, RFK was a rebel inside of our party. He wanted to run against Joe Biden fair and square. The DNC wouldn't let him. Pushed him out. Uh, you, you, can, you can walk down the list. Uh, uh, don't forget, Elon Musk was a uh, Andrew Yang Democrat four years ago. Uh, he's out. Uh, you can walk down the list. Uh, uh, Joe Rogan was uh, very favorable toward Michelle Obama. He was a Bernie guy. He's out. So there's something that's happened in this party where the rebels in this party no longer feel like they have a place. And we've got to be able to talk about that stuff, honestly. So here's some more hard truths for the Democrats to hear. Their ruling elites have taken over the party completely. You cannot get nominated without the super delegates, right, who were awarded basically by the establishment Democrats, okay? So Bernie Sanders, back in 2016, he actually had all the momentum. 
all the popularity. I don't think he would have won the general had he gotten the nomination because he's simply too far left that even back in 2016, there's no way America would have gone for a full-blown socialist, okay? But regardless, the Democrat Party took that nomination away from him. He had all the momentum and popularity. Hillary Clinton did not, and yet she was chosen to be the nominee, okay? And the same thing happened again in 2024. Kamala Harris was picked by that same group of elites to lead the ticket, thus pushing out RFK Jr., who wanted to primary Joe Biden because everybody saw how unpopular he was, okay? And that, of course, pushed away people like Elon Musk and Joe Rogan, right? The Democrats, the left, they used to own these people, right? The free thinkers, the folks who wanted to get out there and change government, shake things up. But now, of course, they've pushed them all away by becoming even more establishment than anyone ever thought the Republicans were. And I'm telling you, we are way off. The entire political class is way off. Um, first of all, digital is a new door knocking. Mm -hmm. You got to understand that. We were laughing our butts off at Donald Trump for suspending his door knocking campaign and letting Charlie Kirk and Elon do a bunch of stuff online. Mm -hmm. We said, these guys are idiots. These guys are stupid. Then you start knocking on these doors. You know what people come to the door with? Their phone in their hand. <laughs> <laughs> They're in a 24 hour digital surround sound mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with CNN, has nothing to do with any stuff that we do. I asked myself, I got a teenage son, I asked him, who are the most influential people in the world today? I'm thinking to myself, he's going to say Barack Obama, Oprah Winfrey, Jay-Z. He says, <coughs> Kai Sent, Aiden Ross, Jinxie, and Sketch. I don't know who he's talking about. I said, what, what, what platforms are you on? He goes, I'm on Twitch, Kick, and Rumble. I said, that sounds like you need to go to the hospital. What are these platforms? I'm telling you guys. The mainstream has become fringe, and the fringe has become mainstream. There are platforms, there are people out there that are getting 14 million streams, and we're on cable news getting one or two million. And so there is a whole world out there. Kellyanne Conway, I hate to agree with her, but I do a lot of times, Donald Trump understood that and we didn't. And that's not just Democrats that don't. The entire political class is way off so once again, Van Jones is correct here, right? The mainstream media is less relevant than it's ever been. And of course, their backers, the political class, are also becoming less relevant. Now, I don't put too much credence into what teenagers are listening to because they don't vote and they're not necessarily political, but there is a change in media. There's a change in how people consume media, right? Where they're getting their information from. And that, of course, is what Donald Trump took advantage of. But also, Charlie Cook and others like him started doing events on campus, actually did get out there and do more physical activities than Republicans had in the past. So yes, maybe the door knocking is over, but the interactions are not. And I hope honestly that the elites and the Democrats never learn this lesson because I want to keep winning and winning easily. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and stay safe out there, people, because they're coming after you.